The reading today is uh, from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 7 to 10, and they can be found in the uh, Red Bible on page 1076 and the Large Print Bible on page 1666. And chapter 10 is headed, The Shepherd and His Flock. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, good morning, everyone. Um, This recollection by the Gospel writer John is of the well-loved picture of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And it gives us a lovely picture of the relationship of Christ with his people. And it's an amazing analogy, uh, which we don't always fully connect with today. We understand some of it because we see it around us. If we we go through farmland, we see uh, sheep but we often don't see a shepherd there. The, the image of God as uh, the shepherd of his people appears right throughout the Old Testament, in Ezekiel and in Psalms uh, particularly. And we're all familiar with Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And perhaps um, we're familiar with Psalm 79, we are your people, the flock of your pasture. And this same imagery of the Lord as our shepherd flows over into the New Testament. Jesus is referred to as the shepherd in all the Gospels and in Hebrews in particular. And this image of the good shepherd is one of protection, of care and love. And without that protection, the sheep are vulnerable to thieves who have no care for the sheep but instead will steal and kill them. But what does that really mean in our context today? The figure of a a shepherd in the Judean uplands was familiar to everyone who was listening to Jesus that day. Unlike today, no flock of sheep grazed without a shepherd, and a shepherd was never off duty. There was actually very little grass in Judea because the ground was stony and so the sheep were liable to, long, uh, to wander long distances looking for grass. And they had to be constantly watched because of that and brought back. And because of this stony ground, a Judean shepherd always went ahead of his sheep, leading them to good pasture. Whereas a shepherd today, if we see him at all with his sheep, he generally follows the sheep. And sheep were largely kept for their wool, not for meat. So sheep could be with a shepherd for a very long time and he would get to know them and give them each a name. And they would know his voice and would follow him. The shepherd's job then was one of care and vigilance. There were wild animals around, especially wolves, and thieves were always on the lookout for sheep to steal. My son-in-law, Sam, is a shepherd, and I've learned how hard it is even today to look after sheep. Sam visits his field several times a day, checking on the sheep. He even sleeps in a caravan in the field during the lambing season. And he, today, is constantly hampered by thieves who steal things like the water tanks for the um, animals. They steal his farm machinery. And dogs and foxes often worry the sheep and even kill them. To protect his sheep in biblical times, a, um, a shepherd would carry a sling. Remember David, who slew Goliath? David was a shepherd boy. And David was amazingly accurate with his sling and his stones, and he killed Goliath from a great distance. 
In biblical times, it was a skill lots of men learned as a form of defense. In Judges 20, we read that 700 men were specially picked to fight because they could sling a stone at a hair, I mean a hair of the head, at a distance. They were that accurate that they could hit a hair. The shepherd could use his sling and shot as a weapon to deter wild animals and thieves. But he would also sling a shot to guide a sheep back onto the right path. If a sheep was going the wrong way, he could sling his shot just in front of him and it would scare the sheep and he would turn back to the flock. At the beginning of this passage, Jesus says, I am the door or the gate. There were two types of sheepfolds which had openings or doorways. There was the communal one in the village where flocks grazing near to home could be sheltered at night and particularly in the winter. And this had the advantage that only one guardian was needed to watch over several flocks of sheep and only the guardian had the key to the door or the gate. And this was what Jesus was referring to in verses 2 and 3. In summer, however, sheep could be kept out at night and were collected into caves or low-walled areas in the hillsides. And in these sheepfolds, there was no door. But the shepherd would lay down across the opening and became the door himself. So no sheep could get out and no one could get in except by stepping over the shepherd's body. And this is what Jesus is talking about in verse 9, where he says again, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved. In Ephesians 2, we read, through Jesus and him alone, we have access to the Father. Whoever enters by me will be saved. In Psalm 23, we read, Your rod and staff comfort me. With his staff, a shepherd would catch and pull a sheep back, which was attempting to stray. And the rod was a weapon to fend off wild animals and thieves. But the rod was also used for another purpose. At the end of the day, when the sheep were going into the fold, The shepherd would hold his rod across the entrance, quite close to the ground, and every sheep had to pass under it. In Leviticus, we read, Every tenth one that passes under the shepherd's staff shall be given to the Lord. And in Ezekiel 20, I will make you pass under the staff and will bring you within the bond of the covenant. So as each sheep passed under the shepherd's rod the shepherd had the opportunity to quickly examine the sheep and see if it had received any kind of injury throughout the day. So this was how the shepherd looked after and cared for his flock. What about this little phrase in verse 9, to come in and to go out? Well, this was well known in Hebrew thought. To come in and to go out was a way of describing a life that was absolutely secure and safe. A life where we can go in and come out freely, without fear. Our environment is at peace. There is no danger. In Numbers 27, we read that Moses asked the Lord that his successor should be someone who shall lead them out and bring them in, so that the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep without a shepherd. To be able to come and go without hindrance is a way of expressing that perfect peace. It means perfect security. And Jesus is saying here that for those who acknowledge the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, a new sense of security enters their life. Their anxieties and fears 
are gone. Although thieves and robbers were familiar stealers of sheep, Jesus was not really talking here, of course, about the criminal act of stealing sheep, but he was talking about the criminal act of the religious leaders of Palestine, the Pharisees, who by their rules and regulations were stealing the hearts and minds of men and women away from God. I was wondering how we might feel robbed in our churches today. I've been in some churches where they seem to be robbed of joy and praise. It it seems to be missing. I've been in churches where progress in building a church for today's world is being stolen by people who want a church to remain in the past, chained to the old way of doing things. Or perhaps on a personal note, someone is robbing us of our spiritual peace by claiming that unless we worship this way or that, or unless we have this gift or that, we cannot belong to Jesus. There are churches and even Christians that will say that sort of thing to you. Lots of things can steal or rob us of our joy in the Lord. And if that happens, do do ask Jesus in prayer to do the detective work in your life. Who or what is the cause of the robbery of my joy in Jesus? Spiritual robbery or even spiritual snobbery can go on right under our noses without us really being aware of it. And that's what had been happening in Judea. In Ezekiel... He prophesied against the spiritual leaders of Israel. Say to them, to the shepherds, Ah, you shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You have not strengthened the weak. You have not healed the sick. You have not bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strayed. You have not sought the lost, but with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and scattered they became food for the wild animals. I am against the shepherds. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths. I will save my flock. I will set up over them one shepherd and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. And the crowd listening to all of this could see so clearly what Jesus was saying. The religious leaders were stealers of God's flock. These leaders were the thieves and robbers who had illegally got control of the sheep. But this was coming to an end even as Jesus spoke. Jesus is the only one through whom men and women can come in and go out safely. Only through Jesus can men and women have life super abundantly. Only by following and trusting Christ the Good Shepherd does life really become worth living. And it is in him that we find our sense of peace. Jesus provides us with a unique freedom to come in and go out. It is a different life from that which is offered in the world because it revolves around a restored relationship with God. Throughout Israel's history, the voice of God had always been a gentle and reassuring one for those who were prepared to listen and to trust him. And now that voice was being heard again in Jesus. And today, there has never been such a time when people so desperately need to hear a voice upon which they can rely. Some people think that Christians are arrogant in claiming that the only way to God is through Jesus, the gate. 
but the gate is wide enough for everyone to enter. And Jesus makes his offer to everyone. Whoever enters by me will be saved. It's not limiting or restricting. It's for everyone. And we must be thankful to God for providing a way for us to know him. In the book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, Eric Butterworth tells the story of a college professor who sent his sociology class into the Baltimore slums to obtain case histories of 200 boys. The students were asked to write an evaluation of each boy's future. In every case, the students wrote... He hasn't got a chance. 25 years later, another professor came across this study and he asked his students to do a follow-up on the same 200 boys who were now grown up. And with the exception of 20 who had moved away or died, the students learned that 176 of the remaining 180 had achieved more than ordinary success as lawyers, doctors and businessmen. The professor was astounded and he decided to look into it. And one by one, they found the boys who were now men. And he asked them, how do you account for your success? In each case, a reply came back. There was this teacher... And this teacher was still alive, so he sought her out and asked her what formula she had used to pull these boys out of the slums into successful achievement. The teacher said, oh, it's really very simple. She said, I just loved those boys. The boy's success was based on the love of a teacher. And because of her great love, They grew up to have successful lives against all the odds of their poor start in life. Jesus is the loving shepherd who was willing to lay down his life for his sheep. He loved us enough to suffer and die on the cross and he offered the gift of eternal life and eternal love to everyone. Jesus, the good shepherd, will always keep us safe in the sheepfold if we choose to listen to his voice, to follow and obey him. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus we have a true shepherd. We come together as the sheep of his fold to worship you and to give thanks for this great gift. Help us to draw close to you, that by your love and by our attentive listening, we may become so familiar with Christ's voice that we will not be deceived or led astray by anyone else. Please nurture and equip each one of us so that we too may bring other sheep safely into the fold. Amen.